Hello everyone, Ben here, and welcome to, um, well, we're going to be talking about the U.S. Senate election in Arizona for 2018, and this is between an undetermined, uh, Republican versus an undeclared, or not an undeclared, but versus an unknown Republican and an unknown, um, Democrat. That said, we can likely infer from polling that the Republican is going to be either um, Martha McSally or Kelly Ward. And, uh, okay, I'm not going to say this out loud, but I've highlighted this. <laughs> that should automatically scare anyone. <laughs> okay, anyway, <clears throat> and apparently there are a bunch of potential candidates as well, but it's probably going to be Kelly Ward or Martha McSally. Um, Jeff Flake uh, is of course retired, yeah, is of course retiring, so he's not running. Um, there are a few who declined, including Jan Brewer. Um, and let's see. Okay. Martha McSally does not have a lot of support. However, Kelly Ward does. Goodness gracious. Including from Rand Paul. few people, some local officials, some individuals, of course Steve Bannon, Sebastian Gorka, Sean Hannity, Austin Peterson, okay, Tommy Lauren, okay, of course Hannity and Laura Ingram, oh really, Laura Ingram, okay. Okay, and a few others. Really, Gun Owners of America. A supporter. But Kelly Ward is mostly losing to Martha McSally, it seems, in, in these polls. But jo Joe Arpaio, in recent polls from Data Orbital and Ohio, Pre yeah, Ohio Predictive, which are what I consider the serious pollsters in this race, have her ahead just barely of Joe Arpaio. Um, the McSally campaign has her beating Kelly Kelly Ward, obviously, but there's a lot of undecideds in this race. Um, and of course, the Ward poll, internal poll, uh, obviously is going to show Kelly Ward ahead. Of course, 2017's Ohio Predictive Insights showed Ward ahead, but I would rate this as a toss-up between the Republicans, between, I'd actually say all three have a chance. Um, I'm going to say that McSally should be considered the favorite, but I reserve my right to change that at any point. Um, <laughs> Because I really don't know what this is going to be. When is the primary? Um, primary election is August 28th. So not a large, long general election campaign. <coughs> Let's see. And we scroll down. A few candidates for the Democrat primary. But it looks like the top. Candidates are Deidre Abode, Abowd, and Kirsten Cinema, or Kirsten Cinema. I think it's Kirsten. And looking at uh, Kirsten, she appears to have the longest list of. of um, endorsements over, well, let's look at Deidre, yeah, exactly, that said, Deidre has the progressive wing, so that should be interesting, 
but it seems like the establishment is, as well as a few progressives, are endorsing her. Including Kamala Harris. Um, not sure where Joe Kennedy is, but she has a Kennedy supporting mm -hmm. her. Uh, locally, she has a little some support as well, it appears. And a few, few um, individuals and a few, a few traditionally Democrat organizations are supporting her. So I would consider uh, Kirsten Cinema the favorite. So apparently there's a libertarian who. Okay, that's weird. And there's even a Green Party. And all three major sources rated as a toss-up. I listed it as Lean's Democrat. By the way, for this uh, this go-over, um, I'm going to be going s not just state by state, but I'm going to cover every state, and we're going to go in alphabetical order. And is there? No, there is not a toss-up option. Uh so, and that's the thing, I, if there's no, or not toss up a third party option, I'm not going, I'm going to go ahead and say I will not um, list any state as a toss up, and in any case where I think it's a true toss up, I will favor the incumbent, unless it's a toss, unless it's a uh, state without an incumbent running, then I will favor the opposition party. So let's say there's a Republican incumbent in a toss-up, or let's say there's a Democrat incumbent in a state I rate as a toss-up, I will favor the Democrat in that race. I will say they are the favorites because of the environment. However, if it's a Republican held seat, but the Republican isn't running and I consider it a true toss-up, I will favor the Democrats because they are the party with the advantage. And if we look at the polling, uh, the only poll where Kelly Ward is ahead was her internal poll. And in that same internal poll, they had... Um, Kirsten Cinema ahead of and I'll go ahead and look at this ahead of uh, they had Kirsten Cinema at Martha McSally however the this shows a seven point race this shows a one point race but those are both for, these are all from 2017 with Kelly Ward and it shows a very close race with a ton of undecideds, enough to potentially either tie the race or flip it. So I would consider this a true toss-up and maybe even a lean Republican. Because undecideds tend to break towards the Republican Party. It happened with Trump, it happened with Romney, it even happened a little bit with McCain, surprisingly. Not to the large extent, and there were also extenuating circumstances there, um, for the Republican Party, but since about 2000, undecideds, or people who were polled as undecided, have tended to break towards the Republican Party, either by a little, or in the case of Donald Trump, a ton. So, I would consider, I would say the Democrats have to have about a four-point lead for, in all, in an average, or especially all polls, in order to in order to to have undecided depending on how many undecideds there are um, for example a ton of undecided voters um, Democrats need a much larger lead in my opinion to have a much safer um, race but then again those situations happen in say Massachusetts or whatever you know heavy blue states and of course, the effect is either negated or changed based off of where the state tends to vote anyway. And Arizona tends to be a, a Republican-leading state, um, even at the Senate level. Um, 
I'd say is about three or four points more Republican than the nation as a whole. So that means undecided should vote, uh, will probably vote a little more Republican than na than they do nationally. So Democrats have to have an even wider margin. Um, and if we look at um, these, well, I'm going to immediately throw out this internal poll. I don't really consider it s serious. I'm also a little skeptical of this because it was run by the Democrats, but at the same time, it's from a reputable pollster, and I, I would consider I'm going to lightly consider it shows Kirsten Cinema ahead by about five points, but the Ohio Predictive Insights, which of course was from 2009, uh, show and this one's with Martha McSally showed it within one point. I haven't seen any recent polls, and, well, I say that now, um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that, uh, according to these, it would be a lean Dem state, or a true toss-up, which means I would lean it to the Democrats. Uh, or sorry, according to these, it would be a true toss-up, and I would lean it towards the Democrats accordingly. But now let's look at uh, some of the uh, hypothetical polls with generic Republican and generic Democrat, or with, in this case, Jeff Flake or apparently Matt Salmon, which I'm going to throw this one out because internal poll. Um, the generic poll from the from public policy polling, which tends to be used by Democrats, but it's a fairly reputable pollster, so I don't ignore it completely. And this one was commissioned by a Democrat leaning group, um, but it showed the generic Republican ahead of a generic Democrat. And generic ballots tend to be important uh, when it comes to Senate elections and congressional elections in general. So. This would indicate it should be a, a true toss-up, but leaning Republican. Um, so I would say lean Republican, but I would change that to true toss-up. But I would lean it towards the Republicans in this case, because I would say it's an exception to my rule, because everything, history, the generic ballot, everything like that, says it should lean Republican. So I'm not going to change it here. So I'm just going to cycle through. And Arizona doesn't change. And... Now that, uh, and we're actually going to take a look at, like I said, every single state. I'm going to get rid of every single race here, and we're going to look at all of it. Because why not, right? There we go. Oh, and let's get rid of Hawaii. So, now we're... And this should show you... I'm going to take Arizona off the map real quick just to show you. This should show you just how bad the Democrats are. How bad a situation Democrats are in. If by some miracle... Like, it would literally take divine intervention, but just as a hypothetical. The Republicans could honestly end up with a supermajority. Now, I it won't happen, and anybody who says it will is crazy, but this is what would happen in a divine intervention situation, right? Somehow... Everything comes up millhouse for the Republicans, and you can see the Republicans with 77 Senate seats. Again, this won't happen. Especially because, you know, look at that. But, you know, the Democrats, they can't even get 60 seats in this cycle. So the Republicans, like I said, they definitely have the advantage because most of this, in, and the other thing is most of the seats they are defending 
are extremely safe for them. So, yeah, let's put this back. So, I'm going to go back to this, and I am l leaning Arizona to the Democrats, and this is the first state that we're going to call. And once I get through all 35 states, which I may do more than one every week, depending on what happens... Um, I may try and double up here and do, you know, for some states, but it'll depend on which ones I have polls for, okay? And when I say polls, I mean recent polls. I'm not going to use 2017 or even 2016 polls because that's useless. <coughs> but I will try and double up. That way we can get through this and start actually talking about and discussing, um, Not only the important races, but also updating this fairly weekly. And I will be updating this periodically and letting you know of any updates I make. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice day. See you next time. Bye.